What's up everyone, Steven here from TechMaker. In this episode, we're going to continue with our NFT project that we started. And we're actually going to start building out the ERC721 contract that we need in order to uh, to run this thing. Um, so this episode is going to be potentially split up into a couple of parts. I'm not sure yet. I'm going to be pretty careful and do this with test-driven development. Um, there's a lot of stuff in here that I've done before and a couple of things that I'm going to do that I haven't done before. Nothing really complicated, just interacting with some contracts in a way that I haven't used. So that's going to be a little bit of a learning experience for both of us, hopefully. I think it's going to go pretty smooth. Um, with all of that said, let's go ahead and just jump in and create a new Truffle project. So I am going to have a web application component of this. And so what I want to do is start with a React box from Truffle. It's just going to save us a bit of time. Um, I'm not going to do anything really complicated or fancy um, in this React app. It's really just going to be like a basic website where you can mint. It's going to have, I think when I actually launch this, I'm going to go all the way to launch this and uh, promote it a little bit and just see how it goes. I think I'm going to do like, I don't know, 250 or 500 artworks or something like that. I'm still trying to make up my mind exactly on some of that, but... Um, Essentially, we're going to take it all the way there, and this React app is just going to be a simple splash page with a little bit of Web3 integration, so we won't mess with it too much. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and just download it to have it set up. This is going to take a minute, so I'm going to pause the video. Okay, cool. That finished. So we're not even going to look at the client in this episode, so just ignore all of that. But for now, let's just run a Truffle compile and see that actually... Um, we got everything installed. There should be like some dummy contracts in there or something. Um, but it looks like we're running, successfully compiling. So let's go ahead and open up the code. And uh, I'm going to blow this up. We don't need the welcome screen. So you can see in here that the, uh, there's a client thing, which has got a bunch of React stuff in it probably. Um, and then we have a couple of contracts, simple storage and so on. And then we have our test simple storage JS. So we should be able to run uh, truffle test and see that we have a passing test just to kind of make sure. I, I know that a lot of this is sort of obvious and repetitive, but I, I impose this strategy on myself of sanity checking everything a lot so that I don't have to go back and find out I was wrong on some simple assumption that I made earlier. So Anyway, looks like it's running. It's a little slow, but in any case, everything's passing, so that's good. All right, so on to some actual stuff here. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is create... I don't know why that's red. I guess it's upset about my pragma solidity. Um, this is also a solidity test, which I don't really... I'm not going to keep this stuff. I'm not going to keep any of this stuff. I'm just going to go ahead and move that to the trash. We're going to write tests in JavaScript. And I'm going to create, I'm going to keep this one around just for a reference, but I'm going to create a new file and we're going to call this uh, frog.test.js. And this is going to assume that we have a smart contract called frog because that's kind of what we have up there. I'll probably name my real contract something a little more sophisticated, <laughs> like actually the name of the project later on, but for now frog will work. Um, so what we need to do first of all is say const frog equals artifacts dot require frog. Do I need to do anything else that artifacts require? Yeah, dot soul. Okay, so if you haven't done TDD before, um, the way this works is you write code that fails and then you fix it. So we're going to run our tests again. And we're going to see basically that it's going to explode and tell us we don't have that artifact. Um, and again, this kind of goes back to the sanity check thing. Every line of failing code is something you need to fix. Um, okay, could not find artifacts frog from any sources. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up into our contracts directory and we're going to add a new one called frog.sol, which again, when I deploy this for real, I will change. Um, but what we're going to do I don't understand why I'm getting all these pragma problems all of a sudden. Um, in any case, let's add our, let's copy this because we need to set all this up. 
And I'm going to make this basically above 0 0.8.0. So I'm going to add a caret 0 0.8.0. And so that this simple storage quits freaking out on me, I'm going to add the same here. And in my migrations, I'm going to add the same here. Over in my truffle config, um, that's significantly reduced from what normally comes in by default. Um, I need to add, normally there's just a little line I can kind of uncomment and change, so I'm going to look up exactly what that should say. Okay, so I'm copying this in uh, from one of my other projects, and I'm actually going to go ahead and turn on this uh, optimizer, and we'll just say true. Okay, cool. So let's just quickly, what's red about this one? I don't know. Maybe nothing. Do I have like a missing comma or something? I don't think I do, maybe. Uh, let's see. I'm missing that. There we go. Okay. There we go, sorry. So now we have everything should be okay. Let's go back and run truffle compile just really quick to make sure that it's not broken. Well, it's definitely gonna be broken because I didn't add anything to frog. Oh, no, maybe I didn't save it or something. So what we can do is say contract, contract frog. And just open that up, save it, and now let's run our tests again. So now we should be able to require this frog.sol without getting this error. And I know this is a little bit annoying if you haven't done TDD before, um, but it pays off later because uh, like in our hot potato app that we built, I literally could not have done it had I not spent weeks and weeks and weeks writing tests um, really carefully because at some point it just got too complicated to keep track of everything. Okay, so let's have a look over at our uh, simple storage. So let's copy this. Um, I like to just kind of essentially get set up a little bit from some of the boilerplate. So we have our contract frog accounts. And basically this accounts variable is a list of an array of 10 unlocked accounts we can use in our, in our test here. So, oh, don't know what happened there. What I want to do is say it allows uh, a person to purchase one NFT. So we're going to go straight for the punch here and just kind of set up the ability to buy an NFT. So this is going to be an async function because we need to await some stuff. And then we're basically going to write code that doesn't exist. So what we're going to do is say something like um, frog equals await frog.deployed. Okay, um, we may actually just initialize a new one. You know, uh, let's go ahead and just, so if we follow the TDD rule here, we'll run this and there will be no frog deployed. It may not fail because we haven't tried to do anything to it yet, um, but there isn't a frog deployed frog contract uh, yeah so there we go error frog has not been deployed to the detected network so what we're gonna do is go ahead and set up our frog here and uh, we'll say deploy the frog and up here we'll just kind of bring this down and grab frog and frog and we may have to actually modify this file a few times. We definitely will, because we're going to need to pass in some arguments, most likely. Um, but anyway, this should be green now. OK, cool. So back, we can go ahead and close that for the moment. So what we want to do is just try to call a method on our frog. So I'm going to say um, above this even, I'm going to say let buyer equal accounts and we'll just pick a random one let's just go with eight and then we'll say um, await frog dot and then what we'll do so we'll say something like purchase 
And let's say that this is going to take a quantity. Um, in this case, we're testing that we can do one. So we'll say number one. And then we'll pass in uh, some extra info here. So we'll say from buyer, which is, again, accounts eight up here. And then down below this, let's also add a value. And we'll say um, web3.utils.2way, uh, which is basically converting it to the 18 decimal places. And then I'm going to say 0 0.05 and then ether. OK. So we're saying, OK, there's a price of uh, 0.05 ether on these for the mint fee. OK, let's go run this, and we'll see that it's broken. And basically what we're going to do from here is try to fix it. And to fix it, we're going to skip a few steps in the TDD thing because we don't have all the time in the world. But you can see frog.purchase is not a function. So what I'm going to do is go over to, uh, first of all, let's do this. Let's do npm install at open zeppelin slash contracts. And that's going to add some stuff to our project uh, that we can use. If you're not familiar with Open Zeppelin, it's a bunch of open source contracts that are sort of pre-made, uh, pretty much the industry standard on a lot of this stuff. And then we're going to jump over to the browser where I have some of this open. And you can see we're using the same Solidity version here. Um, so what I'm going to do is just copy all of this, and then we're going to modify it. Okay, so if we come back to our frog.sol. Um, let's actually get rid of this and then we'll change this to be frog and then we'll say frog and frg for the symbol. Why not just frog? Um, say what it is. Okay, so now they have in here a an award item, right? And I like to put all this stuff on one line. This is not happy for some reason. Open Zeppelin contract utils. Um, let's see, why do I not have that? I need, I should have a node modules here. I could say npm init. Uh, don't know if I need to do that or not. And then npm install. Maybe I should have used something else. Um, now I have node modules here. And uh, these things should be happy now. I don't know why they're upset. OK, if I just move the cursor around, hit Enter and save, it seems to have cleared out the errors. So um, make of that what you will. <laughs> anyway, so right now uh, we have this function award item. And you can look at this and see basically that there's a counter, uh, which we're gonna keep. We're gonna keep. Um, basically, it's just a thing that's sort of pre-built by Open Zeppelin to keep track of the actual ID of the NFT we're looking at. Um, you can see, so we increment. I assume this starts off at zero. So the first person basically comes through here and says increment. It goes to one. It sets the new item ID to one, and then it mints the item. So what I don't want, I really I don't want any of this stuff. So first of all, our thing is called purchase. Um, ours is payable, or should be payable. Um, you know what? Let's leave that off. We'll come. We'll we'll add a test for that in a second. Um, right now we're taking a uint two fifty six, um, and it's just going to be quantity. OK, and then what we're going to do here is we're going to say mint the message dot sender, a new item ID. And for now, let's just put this to be like um, HTTPS colon slash slash www.google.com. Obviously, that's not going to hang around. Um, and the quantity is unused right now, but we did specify that back over here. So let's just run our test and see if we're green. Whoop, that's not what we want to do, but that's okay. Um, truffle test again. And hopefully it's green, but the thing is we haven't tested it. It just means that it's not failing if it is green, in fact. 
and it's not working so i'm gonna play with this off camera for just a minute and see if i can figure out what it is because i was not expecting that okay so it's kind of a basically what i was trying to add before and i thought i didn't need it but i do need to go ahead and add payable here because we are sending actual value to this function so it will fail if it's not marked payable and somebody sends ether with it so let's go ahead and run our test again and let's see what happens here okay cool so now it's green okay so really quick let's go back over here to the browser and you can see that basically what we want to do is check um, the owner of one and make sure that it equals our buyer address and then we want to check the token URI and uh, we're gonna find out we're gonna mess with that a little bit later but we just want to check that actually it's getting set and coming back as Google and again we'll fix it later because that's obviously not right um, so back in our tests what we're gonna do is say um, owner equals uh, await frog dot owner of one and then we're just going to say assert dot I don't know why my thing keeps adding that automatically because it's wrong so we'll say assert dot equal and then we'll say uh, owner and then buyer and then um, we'll leave that at that and let's just run the test one more time and uh, after this, we'll just check that URL, and I think I'm going to cut the video here. It's probably going to take me a few more videos than I thought to get through this. Probably, like, there will be a part at least three, if I'm guessing. Um, and then last, let's check the URL. So we'll say URL equals uh, await. You know what? Let's use the uh, terminology token URI equals await frog.token. URI is it all caps like that let's check over here token URI one and then we'll assert dot equal I gotta fix why ever that's coming in like that automatically assert dot equal and then we'll say um, token URI and then uh, HTTPS slash slash www.google.com and we will probably start off in the next episode by fixing that URI to be what we want it to be, actually. And also making it updatable, because that's what we need to be able to do. Okay, cool. So, and you can see here, so normally, um, what we want to do is actually have failing tests out of the gate. But since we copied that code, these are obviously passing. So we can change this a little bit and just verify that, yeah, if we change it, it fails. Um, but yeah, but that's pretty much the only code we're going to copy in like that. So from here on out, we'll be doing real TDD, but yeah, you can see it's failing. Okay, cool. So that's it for this video. Like I said, in the next video, we're going to pick up with this, probably spend, uh, two to three more episodes finishing up these contracts. And then we're going to go back to integrating it with ALF and our web front end. Um, so we have that ALF uh, service that we have been working on that actually delivers the JSON metadata for the NFTs. Um, and we're going to integrate that more tightly with the actual contract here. So we'll get to that. Uh, it might be a day or two from now before we actually get to all that. But I'm going to try to finish all this up in the next few days and then actually deploy this project either this weekend or early next week. But anyway, I will talk to you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.